Hi everyone, James Paddock here, and today I'm going to talk to you about a momentous new release in the gaming world, Sigil. Id Software founder and game design rock star John Romero has released a new set of levels for Doom, 25 years after the release of the original game. It's the fifth episode of Doom, it's called Sigil, it's free to download, and you should absolutely check it out if you love classic Doom or really anything from the same era. Sigil is rather unlike anything that I've seen for Doom, even with the endless reams of custom content floating around in the Doom community. My recommendation is not to go in expecting more of the same Romero maps that you remember from 1993 though. This is something vastly different. It's important to remember that Romero created these levels with no creative limitations placed on him, such as the number of lines or objects that he could use in a single map without the engine complaining. He used a modern toolset which included a limit removing port of the game and Doom Builder 2, a very quick and easy versatile editor that is the program of choice for a huge number of active mappers today. You'll therefore notice that Sigil's maps have a certain busyness to them, there's nearly always a hefty amount of visual information on display at any one point. In contrast to the original levels from the first four episodes of Doom, which do more with less, as it were, Sigil does not hold back in any regard. Sigil has a striking, incredibly consistent design comprising deathly dark hallways, imposing monolithic structures, gigantic vistas into inky blackness, and large basins of damaging blood and lava, some of which, if you fall into, are inescapable. The consistency of the level design here is notable in the exit rooms alone, where Romero has eschewed the traditional exit door and instead opted to use this marble icon as the exit trigger for every single map. It not being a switch, nor a portal, or having the usual exit sign denoting its purpose might throw one off at first, but consistency is key, and this setup is fine when it's used across all the maps like this. Sigil's difficulty was designed to be even more punishing than the canonical fourth episode of Doom, Thy Flesh Consumed, and this is achieved, no doubt. These maps are not just difficult, they're relentless. There's been nothing quite this hellish in the official Doom releases prior to Sigil. You'll find yourself in claustrophobic spaces, having limited maneuverability from the hordes of powerful monsters that enclose you, and all this is wrapped in a Stygian level of darkness pervading nearly every single map. You will struggle, you will need to quick save, you will need to ration your ammunition, you will need to be nimble on your feet, this is an incredibly tough set of levels to run without dying once. Some of the maps pull fiendish tricks on you that you simply won't see coming. It's not a level set you can blindly blitz through, it will demand patience and resilience. So beginner players absolutely should not play this set on ultraviolence. Even Hurt Me Plenty is a much, much breezier experience when compared. It's worth knowing all this before you start the game, and going in with an open mindset, not to mention acknowledgement that Romero is by no means the exact same mapper he was 25 years ago. I mean, who would be? But enough preamble, let's dive into the maps themselves. There will be spoilers ahead. Level 1, Baphomet's Domain, throws you into a hot start against several enemies at once, something the four original episode starters never did as it happens. This first room introduces you in no uncertain terms to the eye switch mechanic that is present throughout the maps. Shooting these decorations will unlock key points of progression. Shootable switches have been done before in Doom, but not like this. The map is a mostly linear trek across platforms floating in hard to escape lava, bolstering its enemy encounters every step of the way, and has a few secrets allowing you to take useful shortcuts to later areas and pick up powerful items along the way. Here you'll be taught to keep your eyes peeled for the crucial eyes, as some of them are very well concealed. A challenging opener if ever there was one. Level 2, Sheol, pits you in a claustrophobic gauntlet filled with lava, treacherous platforming, careful weaving through tight corridors, and cyber demon turrets. You'll have a tough time with this one if you finish the previous level with limited health or ammo. It demands you to be combat ready and to take care of your enemies swiftly before they can knock too much out of you. Level 3, Cages of the Damned, is a fairly straightforward level that at first glance seems tight and confined, but upon opening up will reveal a huge outer area from which many more enemies will pour forth. You'll be required to do some fancy footwork across this rocky tightrope and do some running jumps to grab useful power-ups. The route to the final room is peppered with dangerous enemies, so you'll need to stay alert. Level 4, Paths of Wretchedness, gives you a decision to make in the very first room. Each of these three pathways leads to a different area where you'll have to contend with all manner of fiendish obstacles, enemy encounters, and environmental hazards. The Crusher section is iconic and ruthless. Level 5, Abaddon's Void, is a visually striking level with an open plan layout consisting of five islands, each with its own tower, all suspended in an obsidian black void. 
You'll have to tread carefully over lava, avoid the fire of two more Cyberdemon turrets, and fend off crowds of higher tier enemies inside the buildings. Every step of the way you'll be required to strategize and conserve ammo given the ruthless encounter design and tight confines. Level 6, Unspeakable Persecution, is a level that does not skimp on challenge. You'll have dramatically limited space to move, pervasive darkness shrouding your sight against powerful enemies, and a maze with a cyberdemon in it. What more could you ask for? Level 7, Nightmare Underworld, the penultimate level, will put you in a number of highly dangerous and punishing situations, and in many cases the environment will work against you. Narrow walkways are especially in abundance here, as well as unexpected teleporter traps leading back to earlier areas of the level which are repopulated with enemies. Level 8, Halls of Perdition, the final level, will find you in more enclosed spaces, all black as sin, with monsters loitering in the dark at every available point, and have you clear a few large open areas before you can descend into the final area and face off against the two boss monsters, the Cyberdemon and the Spider Mastermind. In the interest of keeping this video fairly brief, I won't touch on the secret level, nor will I give Sigil an overarching opinion or any kind of rating. This is simply an overview of what Sigil offers, and you can judge it for yourself. I'm sure everyone will get something completely different out of this experience, and opinion is already extremely divided on it. But it's well worth checking out, and everyone should play it if they can. But again, I would approach it with an open mind. You won't be getting what you're expecting, especially if you're expecting an ordinary set of maps with a classic feel and look. Choose your difficulty wisely, and don't play on autopilot. I myself am not the greatest player in the world, so I did find myself facing some severe challenges throughout the maps, so Sigil in many cases just isn't quite my cup of tea on the higher difficulties, but I don't dislike the set at all. I'm very glad Romero did this for us, that he's closely involved himself with the diehard fans of his game for a quarter of a century, and I'm extremely happy that he thought to reach out to me and several other of my close friends in the Doom community to help make Sigil what it is. I hope I've given an informative and unbiased perspective on what Sigil is. That's all for now. See you next time. Thanks for watching. I don't know if I'll do that many more videos like this. I just wanted to explain what Sigil is at its core, and I tried to remain impartial. In the interest of transparency, I was involved with the development of Sigil simply in that the levels all feature my music. If you would like to stream or purchase my MIDI soundtrack for Sigil, some of which is brand new, please go to my Bandcamp. Also, a reminder that you can join my Patreon or donate to my coffee if you like my work and want to throw me some support. Cheers!